Universal Pictures presents an exclusive behind-the-scenes journey back to the land of ancient Egypt. Oh, no, not these guys again. Come on! It is you who are the chosen one. Join Brendan Fraser, Rachel Weiss, John Hanna, Arnold Vosloo, Oded Fair, and The Rock as the Scorpion King to discover what happens when the mummy returns. Whoa! You must not read from the book! The best sequel films always manage to deliver what everyone enjoyed most about the first one. This just keeps getting better and better. Everything that they love in the first one, they will see on this one as well, and more. The stunts are bigger, the, the whole concept is... The whole concept is bigger. Everything seems more urgent. <laughs> bigger and better. Is there a little something you forgot to mention? The mummy has been resurrected. He's very angry. <laughs> they found him! Him! After the enormous worldwide success of Universal's 1999 release, The Mummy, the creative team of Stephen Summers, James Jacks, and Sean Daniel were already making plans for a sequel. By the time we finished making Mummy 1, I had all these ideas, and I thought, oh, wouldn't it be great to make a sequel? Because I think I could even, you know, do better. All this stuff's being sucked from every angle of the volcano down to the hole. It needed to be a new adventure, a new story, new special effects. You know, I didn't want to rely on old tricks. I had to, you know, take it to a whole new level, make it, you know, not only bigger, but try to make it much better. Unlike most other sequels, the entire original cast returned, eager to reprise their roles. The key is to first get the, the cast back. And that's what I felt really good about, because Brendan and Rachel and John and myself, we all agreed, let, let's not do the sequel unless it's going to be better. Action! The Mummy is a beloved character and it's being well treated. And I think that the appeal really shows that people really care about it. What Steve always said when we were doing the first one, he said, if we do a sequel, I would only want to do it if we could make it different. And then you From his experience outside. in the first film, Summers knew he could rely on the undeniable chemistry of his cast to carry him through the production of the sequel. We all know each other so well that we can actually kind of have a little bit of fun with each other and finish one another's sentences and uh, I think that family dynamic has really been well attended to and well written. Credit to Stephen Summers. Did you guys run in looking at, at the ex? Well, you know each other and you feel very comfortable in that relationship, so uh, it was lovely to see everybody right at the start. And also you hit the ground running, you know, you start filming and you know what you're trying to do. You have a, a relationship, you have a communication already. You don't spend two or three or four weeks kind of figuring out where you're at and how everybody is. And, if it's okay to say this and suggest that. Thing, you know, it's like, where have I been? Where am I going? Exactly. Uh, so it's all, it's very, very comfortable and, and it kind of gives us that head start, I think. I think this is why so many of us were so happy to do this again, because we just had so much fun on the first one. And Steve's a great guy, you know, Brendan, Rachel, John, everybody. Everybody, they're just all great. In the newest chapter of the Mummy Saga, we join Rick and Evie 10 years later, not yet aware they're about to embark on a whole new adventure. We've set our film 10 years later. The people that we got to know in the first have kept together, and the relationships have evolved. My character's grown up a lot. She's no longer kind of earnest, timid, wide-eyed librarian. Go away. Those are poisonous, you know. Only if they bite you. Cut. Good. Print that. I think she's become a bit hooked on uh, maybe adrenaline, although I think that since the last mummy, nothing spooky's happened. It's just been lots of very exciting digs in, in faraway countries. Rick and Evie are married. They have small boys, nine years old. There you go. He's kind of half, half Brendan's character and half my character. Well, from my dad, I've inherited heroism, adventure. Alex? And 
from my mum. It's the year of the scorpion. I've inherited the love of Egypt. You can almost feel himself say the words, it's time to hang up my guns. You know, I don't, this is the last one. I know what you're thinking, and the answer is no. We just got home. That's the beauty of it. We're already packed. Why don't you just give me one good reason? It's just an oasis. Darling. Beautiful. Exciting. Romantic. Oasis. Mm. Kind of the white sandy beach and the palm trees and the cool, clear blue water. And mm. We could have some of those big drinks with the little umbrellas. Sounds good. Sounds too good. What's the catch? Supposedly it's the resting place of Anubis's army. Yeah, you see? I knew there's a catch. There's always a catch. My character's still really kind of wanting to go on more archaeological adventures. That's the emblem of the Scorpion King. And she wants just one last discovery. She has a curiosity that's insatiable. The bracelet of Anubis. They make a discovery that is quite startling and very real, and with it comes a curse. And this time, the curse is personal, as Rick and Evie's son is kidnapped. And they must seek the help of an old friend to return him to safety. My little boy's out there. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get him back. You give me that gold stick there, and you can shave my head, wax my legs, and use me for a surfboard. Didn't we do that in Tripoli? I had seven days to enter the Pyramid of Gold before the life gets sucked out of me. The sands of time have already begun to fall against you. The clock is ticking, and if they don't arrive, then the boy will die. <laughs> Whoa, that was amazing! As much as Rick might not want to have to try and save the world again, He's got his work cut out for him. Right, here we go, then. Roll camera. When the mummy returns, many other recognizable characters also find themselves along for the ride. What I kind of enjoy about this character is that there is no development. Then I killed the mummy and all his minions and stole his scepter. Oh, you're <laughs> so brave. Yeah. And rich. Did I mention rich? What do you think I'm doing here? <laughs> oh, sorry, we must be in the wrong house. I thought you said this was your house. No, I didn't. Call me. <laughs> it's great, because what, what happened was we picked it up where we left off. If he is not killed, he will raise the army of Anubis. I take it that's not a good thing. Oh, he'll wipe out the world. Ah, he'll wipe out the world, ploy. He's a lot more involved. He's got a lot more of a, a responsibility in this film. And for our heroes, that responsibility lies in stopping a familiar villain. <laughs> Stand aside then! Out of the way! It's him! It's him, Otep! Anach Sunamun, the woman that I fell in love with 3,000 years ago, digs me up and uh, takes me to London in the 30s. Do not be frightened. I am not afraid. I'm the resurrection in, of Ang Sunamun, and my name is Mila. So my mission is to resurrect the mummy because then the mummy can bring me back to who I really was. We've kind of tried to build the whole relationship, because in the last movie, we had all of six or seven minutes at the beginning of it, you know, to do it. But this time, is sort of a, uh, more of a line throughout the film. This place is cursed. Did you acquire what we asked? Alex. I want him back, Rick. When the time comes, I shall truly enjoy killing you. I'll get him back, Evie, I promise. I know you will. Finding the balance between colossal visual effects, intriguing storylines, and strong characters, the tireless efforts of writer-director Stephen Summers was more key than ever before. He really, really works and pushes, and that really inspires the crew to work harder, too. It's a tough physical movie, and uh, he has to work very hard. Stand by, everyone. Quiet, please. Rehearsing. Now, how far can I turn? That was perfect. Do it just like that, and it finish the line, then it didn't turn forward. Because right as you turn forward, I'm going to cut wide. OK. Steve Summers really is the star of The That's Mummy. Great. You know, it's, it's written and directed by Steve Summers, and it's really his movie every step of the way. This whole wall's going to explode with water. What, when are we running? Yeah. <laughs> If you don't run fast enough, it's going to take you out and shoot you through that wall back there. You'll be dead in a second. 
Wee. Aren't I good with kids? I'm real good with kids, aren't I? Yeah, the film wouldn't be possible if Steven didn't have this level of energy because he kind of acts everything out for us. Come right into this land. Stop right here. And Steven's metabolism has probably spiked another 100 points. It's hard to keep up with a guy because he has such energy. He's written all this and imagined it all, and he sees it all coming to life. And he has enough energy for 100 people. One more time, Arnold. Give me a bigger pause. I'll cue you to say the second line. Here we go, and action! If you watch him as he directs, he throws his hands in the air. It's like he's almost consuming the images. Closer, closer, it's getting closer, 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 go! He spurs everyone on and urges everyone on and keeps everything kind of bobbing up in the air. It's like a kid in a toy shop. And they're still screaming, but it's... You can't sit down when the director's... You know, at the end of the day, after 12 hours of work, he's still standing up and running around and rushing and stuff. No way anybody else is going to sit down. I never sit down. This is the first time I've sat down all day, I think. And uh, I just like to be going, going. I think that, that my energy spills into the movie. And the movie gets takes has an energy and a, a kind of a funness, hopefully, to it. As long as you go, come through like this. Like the guy definitely has such a passion for the work that he does. And the drive and the energy that he brings to it is truly impressive. And it's infectious, to tell you the truth. I think it really it rubs off on everyone. Marzuga Dunes, May 11th, 2000. The Rock. To join the returning cast members, Stephen Summers created a new villain. The Scorpion King. Scorpion King? The Scorpion King. I play a character called the Scorpion King. WWF superstar The Rock makes his motion picture debut, breathing life into Rick O'Connell's newest foe. He was a fierce warrior, and he led thousands and thousands of men. Ah! He conquered a lot of land, and he conquered a lot of armies. He should cheat a little bit more further to his right. That's great. I'm directing The Rock. For me, actually, the real key was when we sent it to The Rock. You know, he doesn't have to do this movie. He's got many things on his plate. And, but he read the script and said, oh, I want to play this part. This will be fun. And then I knew we really had something. Jan Poel, The first challenge The Rock faced was learning a new language. I had to speak uh, and learn ancient Egyptian. You're yelling, and then you turn and go, Aku Mashenda! Which was interesting. Haku Mashente! Uh, well, I'll have that with me for life. I'll always remember that one. What do you want me to go to on this? And as far as for preparing for the role, you know, I'm, I'm in decent shape. I just had to prepare for the sun, but there is no preparing for the sun out here in Morocco. Haku Mashente is the command. In Arabic, it means it's hot as hell. Discovering memories of filming the first Mummy movie, the same crew returned to the Sahara Desert, the perfect location to begin the sequel. I'm trying to walk in the same lines and the same footprints, guys. Like Lawrence of Arabia says, it's clean. But it's also quiet, and cell phones don't work. Everybody's focused on the movie. For a director, it's perfect. We shot from Marrakesh, way out in the Sahara Desert. And now we're shooting also in Jordan, and some in Egypt, so we're getting around. Jonathan. Bags. Oh, my hands are full. Now. Uh, right, right, I'll get the bags. I'll deal with the flight details. Honey, you're not a subtle man. We don't have time for subtle. I find ancient Egypt really fascinating. That's part of the reason I did the first movie. I just, I love the whole culture and everything about that era. Morocco has had a spiritual thing, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you hear people like, calling to prayer and so much spirituality in that place that actually, I think all of us were very, very much into it. It has the largest sand dunes in the world, so we can put the camera way back and put characters in the background. So as far as I can see, it's like there's not a footprint in sight. While shooting in these exotic locations presented its own set of obstacles, another challenge the filmmakers faced was elevating their own standard of stunning visual effects. Action! To accomplish this, Summers reteamed with the wizards at Industrial Light and Magic under the guidance of visual effects supervisor John Burton. That's pretty good. I didn't First question you always ask when you're working on a sequel, you know, what can we do to top ourselves? 
it's always a challenge to do a sequel and be successful at it. We try to collaborate with the director as early as possible, and Steve's great to work with because he appreciates how that makes the effects better at the end of the day. You want to see him get scorpion? Oh, he gets stung. Whenever I come up with ideas for special effects, they go, okay, how do they serve the characters? How do they serve the story? And if these big special effects work for story and character, then they make the movie. The technology is always changing under your feet. Let's get a four proof behind them. The, the this division on that one. You have to sort of step on board the moving platform at a given point. <laughs> Brendan Fraser is going to battle with 13 soldier mummies. We have to have that pretty meticulously worked out. So we come up with a very careful plan about where each mummy is going to be, what each mummy is going to do, what Brendan's going to do in response to that, and then we work it out very carefully. <laughs> Exactly like that, the timing, get into do the whole performance again for yeah, yourself. Yeah. Let's do it. It's like what would really be happening here, and how do we now create part of that using uh, visual effects and part of that using photography so that everything looks like it's all happening at the same time. It is tricky. I mean, it's difficult just simply because you're reacting to something that you think you can imagine, you know, but of course. Alan's imagination is far more warped than yours could ever hope to be. It really is like being a member of an orchestra, if you like, and playing your bit. The music sounds best when everybody's playing the same tune, you know what I mean? You just kind of have to be brave and trust that you're not completely overacting if you feel that you are. And maybe you are a little bit, but the truth is it all makes sense once they put the film together. Well, that's part of my job, to be here to help them understand what it is that they're looking at on that big blank blue screen, or what it is they're reacting to as they crawl through the dark caverns, or what it is that's chasing them that makes them want to run away in terror. It's very, very complicated work. So while I'm here shooting, my crew's back at Industrial Light and Magic, and they're working away trying to figure out how to do this stuff. So when we get there, we can uh, really start putting it all together. Okay, so the set, guys. That's always a big challenge, is making sure that what you do, no matter how spectacular it is, people aren't coming out of the theater thinking the effects were great, but missing the movie. Lots of energy, guys, in the foreground. It's not about speed. Yeah. It's about precision. That one more time, right away, guys. OK, here we go, then. Stand by. Defend your ears. Roll cameras. OK, Steve is yours. Ready, and action! It's great. A lot of interesting characters, a lot more action, a lot more excitement. It's a lot of fun. A couple of years ago, this would have seemed really strange to me. It's certainly uh, different from what The Rock is used to. It's just first class all the way. It's going to be great. Just like old times, huh? The romance, the action, special effects, the humor. Every time I hook up with you, I get shot. It's time someone taught you a lesson, wench. OK, now I'm a believer. That's my husband and my son down there. Make me proud. My feeling from this side of the camera is something a bit unusual is happening. That mark means you're a protector of man. Oh, I hate mummies. My dad is going to kick your ass. I do not think so. They're just going to get more of what they had the first time. It's going to be bigger, bolder, uh, and a, a few surprises. You're too late, O'Connor. Hot the road! I need you to help me find my son. The time has come, my little friend. Dad! Get away! Jonathan, I thought I said no more wild parties. Uh, well, when you're popular. If you like the first mummy, this one's just simply bigger and better and more hellacious. This is bad, Evie! We've had bad before! This is worse! And it is a ride. It's something that you really want to go on and get out the other side and do it again and again and again. I mean, it has been for me.